How's it going guys? My name is Selena and welcome to a brand new video. Today, this is going to be kicking off our brand new series on which we're going to be doing a GFX series. So for all of you guys who, or girls, who are interested in making their own GFX for their own channel or you just want to get into GFX and know a few techniques to use, then you've come to the right place. So um, today we're going to be kicking it off nice and simple with a thumbnail tutorial and um, yeah, so before I go on, what you're going to need for this tutorial is Photoshop CS3 and above. Uh, technically I'm just using CS6 which I just prefer to use since it's just easier to follow along and I'm a bit more familiar with the interface with it now. So um, I just just prefer to use it. So um, yeah, it doesn't really matter though, but uh, just in case you get lost in this with maybe different things and shortcuts, I probably won't be able to help you unless it's in CS6, so I'm um, sorry about that. So today we are going to be making this thumbnail, so as you can see on my channel, I've been changing everything to kind of these text thumbnails. I think they're really simple to do, they look clean, effective, and I think they're just really simple to do, and I just, you know, they don't take long at all, I managed to quickly whip some up in a matter of like 15 minutes or so. Um, or even less depending on how much detail I want to put in it but um yeah for the sake of this video I will be using a lot of shortcuts and hotkeys and stuff so I will be having annotations for that on screen just so you guys are a bit more familiar with it because I don't like to waste time by doing like a whole bunch of clicking and looking for icons um, it's just a lot more efficient and it's just the habit to get into when you're using Photoshop so um yeah, so basically what we're going to do first is we're going to do, well, assuming that you have Photoshop already open, we're going to do Control N to create a new file. We're going to set the width to 1 to 80 to 720. Uh, this is just the size for your normal 720p thumbnails. You can do 1920 by 18, sorry, by 1080, and that will give you a, obviously, 1080p HD thumbnail but um, I think it's just a lot easier to do it 720p because it's a lot easier to find things that will fit within this resolution than it is to find with the, um, your other resolutions so uh, yeah so you should have a blank canvas that should look like this so um because of issues with my Photoshop I cannot drag and drop images into my canvas but um I just have to transfer it through paint because it's just it, that's just how it is for me but um yeah so this is just a screenshot that I took by myself on the Hypixel server. Uh, it's just a nice shaded screenshot. If you guys want to use it, I'll just put it in the description below. Just If you guys want to just use it as a reference thing, if you're following this tutorial, then you can just use it, or you can just use it for your actual thumbnail. It doesn't really, I don't really care. So um, once you've done that, you should just have it in your background right here. Of course, you can scale it up and down by doing Control T, and you can just hold Shift hold the corner edge and just drag it up and down until it fits into your desired canvas size. Now once you've done that you just press enter and it should just lock in just like that. Simple, easy, done. Now next thing we want to do is we're going to be just doing the text. Now the text is the big main effect. If you guys, I'm pretty sure by the end of this tutorial you guys should be really familiar with it and you should be able to do it within a matter of minutes. And Basically, you'll have a really easy thumbnail done in a matter of minutes, basically. So, without further ado, we're going to be clicking our text icon here. So, it should be on the side, right here. That's it. And we're going to just click on the canvas, and you're going to put in your text. For this instance, I'm just going to be using the title of one of my old Build Battle videos, which is No Wins. And we're probably just going to end up using that anyway. So, we're just going to go No. Alright. Now if you guys want to change the font colour, you can just double click on the text layer like this. Make sure it's highlighted or it's not going to work. Uh, click on the the colour up at the top and then you can choose whatever colour you want it to be. But for this instance, I'm just going to use white. Now once you've done that, um, obviously it's a bit too small. So we're going to do Control T, Shift, uh, hold Shift and then drag, click on the corner to change the size. Easy peasy. Now once you've done that, you can just hold shift and you can use that to align it with the same horizontal area or you can just drag it everywhere or just try and find where you want it or you can just hold control and just see if you can 
get it wherever you need it to be. <laughs> but for instance, we're just going to put everything in the center because it's just, yeah. So we just put that here. So now, next thing you want to do is you want to do Control J. Now, you want to have your text layer selected first before you do that. So you just be sure to select it. Just left click it. Control J. Hold Shift drag it down and you should have a duplicate layer of that text. Now in order to really be able to do this effect effectively is you need to have the font as close as possible. Um, so obviously we're just going to leave a tiny little gap here um, just so we can have our color effect good and go. Yeah? Alright. So once you've done that you just want to just leave it there or you can just rename it so you double click on the T icon and we're just going to rename that to wins or whatever your video is on, just name it to that and then drag that so it's aligned in the center with our first text layer. Now once you've done that, you want to double click on your first text layer which was the no, double click that. You should get your layer style, there should be a bunch of options to choose in effects. Uh, we're going to be choosing gradient overlay for this one. And we're going to set the opacity down to 20%. Easy peasy. Then the next thing, we're going to choose stroke. Uh, for in this instance, I tend to use, as you can see, I use a lot of grey and white for my outlines, which is just a simple colour combination. It doesn't clash too much, which is always really good. So we're just going to make it a dark grey. And we're going to set it up to maybe 20, 15... I think 15 looks pretty good. Of course, if your font is small, it's going to look very bludgy if you leave it at 15 like this. So you might want to change that to a smaller number. Or vice versa, if it's too big, you might want to use a larger stroke size. Now once you've done that, we're going to be duplicating our effects so we have it on this layer. So what you want to do is you want to hold Alt Hold your left click over the effects, not the stroke, not the gradient overlay, but the effects, and then you should get an FX icon. Now you can drag that up, or drag it down, wherever you put it, to your other text layer, and it should duplicate the effects that we made on the other layer. Now once you've done that, it's, as we can see, it's obviously clipping here, so we can just move this so it's not clipping, like so, and then what we'll do next is we're going to select our no and we're just going to move that a bit as well just so it doesn't clip too much there we go now as you can see we have these gaps here which we don't want we want it to be nice and full so what we're going to be doing is you can either increase the stroke size which I might do in this instance, so I'm going to increase it to baby, baby, wow lol, to 20. Uh, obviously you're going to move it so it doesn't clip. And once you've done that, we're going to be creating a new layer. Now next to the recycle bin on the bottom right hand side, you can just select this little box and that should create a new layer. Now before we get started, we don't want this to clip over the top, so we're going to click and drag that under our text layers. Once you've done that, you want to press I to give your eyedropper tool and you want to select the colour of the stroke, just like so. And then you want to press B to bring up your brush tool. And make sure it is on the hard brushes and not the soft brushes and make sure it's kind of a small size because anything over possibly 200 will be a lot too, will be too large and it will just look bad, okay? Because we all we want to do is fill in these gaps. So I'm just going to leave it at 60. And just real simple with your mouse, just fill up those areas with those gaps, like so. There we go. Um, of course, we're going to just make a new text layer. So obviously, this is all up to you if you guys want to use a new text layer. Um, you can leave it as it is now, but if you're doing a series, I'm just going to do this for my own sake because it's my build battle series. So we're just going to add a new text layer and we're going to just name it Build Battle. Now of course I want to stay with the theme, so obviously I have a different font, so I'm going to just quickly center that, and then we're going to change the font so it obviously matches with the theme. And then we're going to change the color, as I said before, you just 
make sure it's highlighted, click on this icon here and it should change the colour. Then control T, scale it up a bit so it doesn't have to be too small and it should be good to go. Now once you've done that you can essentially do the same thing as we did before, hold ALT, hold the effects with your left click, drag it up to that layer. Now as you can see the build battle has a really large stroke, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. So we're going to just decrease that a bit, we might drop it down to maybe 10. And there we have it. Now of course we just want to scale it, sorry, move it up a bit so it's not clipping but it's there. And as before we're going to do the brush tool, so hold press B and then we're just going to fill that layer in like so. Beautiful. Now. Of course, the final part of this effect is obviously the white uh, stroke outline. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to shift click. So you want to have your first bottom text layer selected or your first top layer selected. Either way it will work. You can do control as well, but I just prefer to do shift, it's just easier. So we're going to click on that layer, hold shift then press on the top layer and it should select all the layers in between. Now once you've done that, you want to do Control e to merge your layers like so. We'll just move it up a bit so it's just a bit centred, like so. And we're just going to quickly merge in, whoops, we're going to merge in that backing area with what we did with the brush tool and we're just going to merge it like so. So obviously we have our text layer essentially complete. So we're going to just double click on it, stroke, change it to white and possibly set it to maybe 10, 15, it depends on what the effect you want. If you want it really bold then you can set it to maybe 10 but I might leave it, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll probably leave it at 10 and there you go, that's the basic text effect. Of course you can also double click, select your gradient overlay, select your blending mode to soft light and just set that down to maybe 50% and you should have a nice kind of gradient over across the whole of the text which looks pretty good if I'm gonna admit. So once you've done that just drag that into center and that's your basic text effect done. You can just leave it as it is if you want to you can add some background effects which I'm just gonna go through now and um, yeah so basically for text for the background effect we're going to just click on our text layer I mean sorry our background layer I should probably rename that for this always get in the habit of renaming your of labeling your layers because it's just very effective especially when you do really large projects <laughs> once you've done that you can just select on the bottom right hand there should be a circle it should be like half filled select it color look up now this is an amazing tool, not many people really know about it, but um, Photoshop provides a whole bunch of presets that you can choose from, which look really good depending on what you're trying to go for. Um, obviously different colours and effects, I might, ooh, that looks good. So we might stick with four colours, it makes it look a lot more, more vibrant. And then we're just going to clip it to our background, so we're going to hold ALT, and then if you click in between the layers, this should pop up this little icon here, click it and it should mask to that layer. So once we've done that, we want to create a new layer, so select that and then press G. Now this should, I quote should, bring you to your gradient settings. If it isn't and it's on the paint bucket tool, you just want to right click it and select the gradient tool right here. Uh, once you've done that, you want to just check your settings, so make sure it is on the first setting, that's the linear gradient tool. And then make sure your colour is set on your foreground colour to transparency. Now once you've done that, you can just select your foreground colour. For this, I'm just going to use maybe gold. Gold, like that. And then you just want to select under the canvas, just like this. Hold, click, sorry, hold, click, shift hold shift sorry and drag it up and you should get a nice little gradient kind of effect like that. Of course we're just going to set the opacity down because it's a bit overwhelming so maybe it's 20% would look nice and there we go. 
And now finally, if you guys are doing a series, of course you're going to have episode numbers. So we're going to just select our text tool, put it in the top right corner, and then just give your episode a number. Be sure to change the text so it fits in. Let me just find that text I had before. Here we go. Uh, then Control T, resize it to however you wish. Uh, you can always put it in here or here. It's, it's just up to your personal preference. And we're just going to put that there. Enter to finalize your transformations. And then we're going to double click on that layer. It's like gradient overlay. Set it down to 20%. Just like so. Now as you can see, it kind of it looks pretty much exactly the same. Well, And um, that's basically it. It's a really simple technique to do. Um, probably by the time you've done this tutorial, you'll probably want to go over it a number of times and by then you'll probably have this done in a matter of a few minutes uh, but for the sake of this tutorial it's obviously going a bit longer but um yeah that's basically the final product here um, as you can see on my channel this is essentially what it will end up looking like so it's, it's clean it's a really nice technique to know about um, if you guys are doing kind of like maybe a vlog channel or something like that maybe it will be helpful to have kind of something that pops out like you at you like this or if you guys have like a Minecraft channel or uh, and are unable to do rendered kind of thumbnails or backgrounds or something like that then this is kind of a nice easy option to go at it but um yeah so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial uh, it's pretty fun to do uh, if you guys were interested in more tutorials be sure to just click the subscribe button chuck down a like and um, I'll probably have the next episode up very soon which will be doing a rendered Minecraft banner and uh, I think that would be amazing. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have used this tutorial to make your own thumbnails, be sure to link me down in the description below to your channel. Um, and I'll check it out because I think that'd be amazing. So, um, yeah. And one more thing, if you guys have suggestions for future tutorials on what you want to see. So if you guys want to see certain styles of thumbnails or certain styles of avatars and banners, be sure to hit me up in the comment section below. I'll be sure to reply to you and see if I can do that. So, um, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope to see you guys having to use these thumbnails because they look pretty good. Am I right? But, um, yeah. How many times have I said in this video? We'll never know. But I'll see you guys next time, hopefully, in the next video. So, uh, yeah. I'll see you guys later. Bye.